everyone, welcome to Things Lucy Reads. I'm Luce and this is a holiday book haul. I originally filmed this book haul with the intent to add it onto my holiday vlog, which I will link somewhere up here at the top of the screen. Um, but then the footage for this uh, haul ended up being half an hour on its own. And that was far too long to add to the end of the vlog, so I decided to make it its own video. But I didn't film a new intro. It is quite long, so if you sit through the whole thing, thank you very much in advance. Let's get into it. So I was in Adelaide for six days and I did book shopping on most of those days. Um, the first day that we were there was the last day of the South Australian State Library book sale um, put on by like their friends of the library. Um, obviously it was the last day and we got there right before closing time so the selection wasn't amazing. A little underwhelming if I'm honest but I did pick up two books. I picked up Herbal Treatments for Common Ailments, an Australian and New Zealand Guide by Gregory Arquette. Um, I do like reading about what like herbs and common plants have medicinal properties or have been used in medicine. I think that's fascinating. And I thought this one was interesting because it was specifically for Australia and New Zealand. Um, I have two other books about this, but, but I think they were both published in America, so it's a little bit irrelevant for me down here in the Antipodes. Um, so I got that one and that one was, um, it was marked a dollar, but because they were shutting, everything was half price. So that was 50 cents. And then the second book that I got there is Marianne by George Sand. I've heard about George Sand, but I've never actually seen any of her books in person. So, um, when I saw this one, I grabbed it. Um, and this one was a dollar. The next day we went to the Big Big W at Cumberland Park. And the books I got were Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. Um, this is a YA fantasy novel, but it I saw a tweet saying that if you like Sansa Stark, you'll like this novel. And I love Sansa Stark, so I got it. And the sequel just came out, so perfect timing. I also got The Secret of the Realms, which is an extended novelization of The Nutcracker and the Four Realms, um, which is a movie I haven't seen, but I did buy the DVD while I was there also. And I just really like how this book looks and I love novelizations and I love The Nutcracker. So I picked it up. And then the next book that I got is The Girl King by Mimi Yu. This is everything that I love in a book. Um, Asian inspired fantasy by an actual Asian author and not by a white person. Court intrigue, a throne in dispute about who is the heir. Honestly, it just sounds fantastic and I'm really excited for it. And then the last book that I picked up is a brick that everyone will recognize and that is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This has an FF romance in it in case no one has told you that. I don't know much about it otherwise um, except that it's beautiful and everyone says this is a brick but I still had no concept of actually how big it was. After five minutes of carrying this around I had to stop and put it in the basket that my dad was carrying because my arms were just so tired. The next day was um, friend hangout day. I met up with my friend Augie and they and I went to a couple of shops. The first book that we went to was the Oxfam bookshop on Hutt Street which is honestly amazing. I bought Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons which sounds vaguely like Emma in that the main character likes to have an impact on people's lives and to manipulate things to make them go the way she wants them to go. Um, but Augie recommended it to me and it was only $4.50 so I picked it up and if it's bad it's their fault but I don't think it would be bad. The next book that I got is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. I didn't really know what this book was about until like last week when Kathy read it and reviewed it on her channel and it sounds amazing and I can't believe I never knew that's what it was about before. Um, I nearly bought this at Big W at Cumberland Park but then thought I'm probably going to be able to find a copy easily at the Oxfam shop and I did and it's actually so beautiful. So I'm really happy and this was five dollars so that's still really good and I'm really excited to read this. The next book that I got there I was um, really happy to find and really surprised and it is The Madman's Daughter by Megan Shepherd. This is sort of like, it's not quite a retelling but like a like a sequel to The Island of Dr Moreau by H.G. Wells. Which it's about Dr Moreau's daughter Juliet and the life she tries to make for herself after the events of The Island of Dr Moreau. This was four dollars. Before we went on this trip I was thinking wow I wonder if I can find a copy of The Madman's Daughter at any of these secondhand shops and then kind of didn't put it on my list because I wasn't anticipating being able to find it and then I found it so that was really really awesome. The next book that I got is Vigil by Angela Slatter. This one was um, $4 again really great prices at the Oxfam shop. 
Um, this is set in Brisbane and Angela Slatter is a an Australian author. So this is like an urban fantasy. It's got a race of people called weirds and the main character is half human half weird and weird drink a wine made from the tears of human children uh yeah it sounds interesting not quite the kind of thing that i would usually read but i absolutely loved angela slatter's um fairy tale retellings or just straight up fairy tales and i just really wanted to read more books that were written by her and um, I was standing there going, oh, do you think I should buy it? Do you think I shouldn't buy it? And Augie was like, you should buy it. So I bought it. And then the last book that I got at that shop, which came in at $4 again, is The Hate Race by Maxine Benneber Clark. And Maxine Benneber Clark is um, an Australian woman of Afro-Caribbean descent. And this is her memoir. Um, from the blurb, it actually sounds like she has vitiligo. There's a quote on the inside flap and it says, Against anything I had ever been told was possible, I was turning white. On the surface of my skin, a miracle was quietly brewing. And that sounds like vitiligo. Maxine Benneber Clark is fairly famous. I see her a lot on Twitter. I don't follow her, but a lot of my friends do and she gets retweeted into my timeline. And she just seems like a really A-plus person. So I'm excited to um, read more about her life. After we went to the Oxfam bookshop, we went to the bookgrocer on um, Rundle Street. The book grocer is kind of like book outlet in that it sells publishing overstock. Most of the pub most of the books are like absolutely fine. Only once have I bought a book from there and had something be wrong with it. Um, it was The Science of Kissing, which is up there, and I bought it at one in Melbourne. And it's actually bound upside down. So like if you open it the way that you think you should, the words are upside down and you have to turn it the other way to read it. So, But that's the only time I've ever bought any book from there that has a defect. So it's just cheap books otherwise. Um, two of these books that I bought were $3 and the others were full price, which was 7 but if you bought three of those, you got them for $20, so I did that. Um, the first one I have is The Hunt for Vulcan by Thomas Levison. This is a science non-fiction book. It's about, um, this planet, obviously named Vulcan. I don't know whether Isaac Newton discovered it or just theorised that it would exist, but no one really could find it or prove, con like, definitively that it existed until Albert Einstein. So um, I'm quite interested in astronomy and um, like planets and stuff. So it sounded really interesting. So one day I will get to this. The next book that I bought there for $7 or one third of $20 is The Difference Engine by William Gibson and Bruce Sterling. This is the first ever steampunk novel or is regarded as being like the, the first steampunk novel. Um, it's about, it's set in London in 1855, it involves the Industrial Revolution and um, Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage, those kinds of people and the computer that they're building, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I've been eyeing it off in different bookshops for ages, but it's usually priced at like $24 for this paperback, so I didn't really really commit to it at that price, um, but for $7 I definitely picked it up. And then the last $7 book that I picked up there was on Augie's recommendation, and it is Adam Robots by Adam Roberts. Adam Roberts is their favourite author, so um, I've been wanting to pick something up of his for quite a while. He writes just kind of like sci-fi, but interspersed with every other genre that also exists. Um, and this, as like since this is short stories, it's a pretty good way to get into him. Okay, the next book that I bought at the book grocery site is The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon. This was $3. I haven't yet read um, The Bone Season, but this is the edition that matches my copy of The Bone Season, and it was $3, so I picked it up. And then also while I was there, also for $3, I picked up The Little Book of Colouring Into the Deep, which is just a bunch of little ocean themed coloring pages my jam and then the last book that i received on that day i did not buy but it was a present to me from jess and it is sir gawain and the green knight by a jr tolkien when she was done with it she said hey do you want this and i was like absolutely yes so she gave it to me so thank you jess okay and then the next day was um, the day that I was in Adelaide for, and that was to see um, a specialist gynecologist that I go to. Um, and his practice is in Norwood, so after we went to the doctor, we went down to the main street of Norwood to do a couple of things. Um, I went to two bookshops that day. And the first one is the uh, Vinnie's Op Shop. So the first book on top of this stack is M.O.F. 
by Lisa Papa Dimitriou and Chris Tebbets. This is a gay YA book that was released um, in the when would it have been? About 2007 or 2008, or at least that's when me and my friend read it. This was back when gay YA wasn't really a thing, so you kind of read whatever you could get your hands on, which around that time was basically this and Julianne Peters. I've never been able to find another copy of it in reasonable condition for a reasonable price ever since then. The one that I had was my friend's copy, so I just like borrowed it from her. But anyway, so there's this girl called Franny, and she has, um, a crush on this guy called Jeffrey, but she's too awkward to talk to him. So what she does is she gets her friend Marcus to talk to Jeffrey for her, and um, Marcus is gay, and he kind of gets the feeling that Jeffrey is actually falling for him because they're his words, and not, in fact, for Franny. And then there's a really good twist at the end, and everything works out kind of neatly in the same sort of vein as Twelfth Night. But yeah, I'm just really excited to reread it and see how well it holds up to what I remember. Um, and this one was $3. And then the next book that I picked up there is Ancillary Mercy by Anne Leckie. This is the third book in the Imperial Rouch trilogy. I have Ancillary Justice, which is the first one. This was $4. Then now I just have to acquire a copy of Ancillary Sword so I can actually read the whole series. And then the next book that I got is Poems by Catullus, which is another recommendation from Augie. This book was $3.50. And the poem that they showed me to kind of demonstrate what he's like is basically Catullus going to this guy. He goes, Rufus, no one will fuck you because you smell. And honestly, I'm so here for poetry that is regarded as being like classic and important and basically being about stuff like that. I think that's fantastic. So I'm excited to read those and see more of what he's like. The next book that I picked up there is False Hearts by Laura Lamb, and this was $4.50. I keep hearing about this book. Um, it involves a pair of twins who were formerly conjoined but aren't anymore. Um, I think it may be science fiction, but I'm not too sure. Um, it says on the back that the twins were raised in a cult. I'm pretty sure there's also bisexual rep in this, but I might also be wrong about that. Anyway. I have it, I'll read it, I'll find out. The next book that I got at Vinnie's was um, a really lucky find. It is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham and it was $4 and this edition is lovely. It one of the things I decided I would look for on this trip was a nice copy of The Wind in the Willows and I saw this one um, at the Oxfam shop and it was just so beautiful and quite cheap. So I picked it up and I'm excited to read it, um, especially since I found out that uh, Frog and Toad were always meant to be a couple. Kenneth Graham wrote them as a couple, never made it explicit, but that was his intention and I'm pretty sure that he also was gay or bisexual or something. It was a thing on Twitter a little while ago. Anyway, yes, I've never read it, but I'm going to. Okay, and the next book that I picked up there is Jack Glass, The Story of a Murderer by Adam Roberts. Um, so this is like a whodunit, but in space, but we know straight off who the murderer is. All we have to figure out is how he did it and why he did it. And that just sounds fantastic. And the cover is beautiful. Looks like a stained glass window. And then the next book that I picked up, actually it was the first one that I picked up. It is Throne of the Crescent Moon by Saladin Ahmed. Um, this is an ex-library coffee and actually so was Jack Glass. But props to the Port Adelaide Library. They covered their book in plastic, but the only places where tape actually touched the books was just here to hold the dust jacket on and then again at the bottom. And they peeled off really easily and then the plastic was separated from the actual dust jacket by a layer of tissue paper. So once I separated the jacket from the book, all I had to do is cut down the middle of the tissue paper and it freed up the dust jacket, which now has no marks, no tape and no stickers. And that was honestly amazing. Um, this was $6. And I'm really excited to read this. The only other book I have by Saladin Ahmed is um, the two Star Wars books that he wrote for. Um, but again, I like he's someone that I encounter on Twitter, even though I don't follow him. He's retweeted into my timeline a lot. So I'm really excited to read his book and find out what it's about. Also, it just looks like fun. After we went to Vinnie's, we went down the other end of the parade to get to Dylan's, which is the big bookshop in Norwood. It's honestly amazing. The range is so good. Um, and the book that I bought there was one that I didn't even know was out in paperback yet. And it is The Light Between Worlds by Laura Weymouth. The American hardback has like a really beautiful silver um, cover and it has like two deers on it. This one just has flowers and foil, but I dig it. Um, so this is about two sisters, Evie and Philippa who are transported into a magical realm, kind of like Narnia, and then 
they became queens of that realm but then they were thrown back into the ordinary world which is wartime London and now they have to cope with their regular lives. One sister is really glad to be back in her own world in her own time, one of them is not and then one of them goes missing and the other one has to figure out if she successfully made it back to their fantasy world or if something more sinister has happened to her. Um, yeah so it just sounds like like a better kind of Narnia where um, misogyny isn't a thing. Um, the whole reason that Susan did not return to Narnia in Voyage of the Dawn Treader is because she'd outgrown it and by outgrown it, it it meant she'd become interested in stockings and lipstick and boys and honestly fuck off with that C.S. Lewis. Go fuck yourself. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to read this because it's so beautiful and because it sounds exactly like something I love but which no longer really serves me for several reasons anymore. But yeah. And then after that, we went into the city. We went to three bookshops in the city. Two were like discount publishing overstock bookshops again. Not the book grocer, they were like just no name ones. But they both had um, books for $5. And so the first one I went into, I bought The Night Brother by Rosie Garland, and it just sounds really interesting. It's about a pair of siblings who live in Manchester in the late 19th century, and one of them just kind of, like, really embraces the nighttime and, like, is a, you know, big party animal. Um, and then while his sister just wakes up, like, exhausted and sick every morning and can't really do anything and doesn't remember what happened at night. It sounds really intriguing. Um, I didn't buy anything in the other $5 bookshop because I didn't have anything that I wanted. Um, so after that I went to Dimmick's and I bought the book that I went in there specifically to buy and that is Underdog, um, which is a collection of Love Oswaye short stories edited by Tobias Madden with a foreword by Fleur, Fleur Ferris. Several of the people that I follow on Instagram are in this collection. Several of the stories are queer. I'm pretty sure most of them, if not all, are own voices in some respect. Uh, but yeah, just really excited to read it. And then I bought two sale books, and the first one is Star Wars Fe Forces of Destiny Daring Adventures Volume 2. This was $7.99. I really love um, Star Wars. I haven't seen all of Forces of Destiny, but I've seen some of it. And I just really love the idea that there are now books about my favourite Star Wars women, um, especially Ahsoka, because I love Ahsoka. And then also while I was there, I found A Cold Legacy by Megan Shepard for the very large price of $2. This is the third book in the series that starts with the madman's daughter excited to see what happens in this series and then on our last day our last shopping day we went to marion shopping center we went to qbd and i found two bargains and the first one is the flame tree collection of norse myths and tales with a foreword by dr Brittany sean i don't have anything more than the most basic understanding of norse myths most of that comes from Marvel movies, which I know is not like great. I don't have any books that were specifically focused on being um, a collection of the myths that's not by Neil Gaiman. So um, it was $14.99 down from $44.99 and it's beautiful, so I bought it. And then the second book that I bought there, and so the last book that I bought for the whole trip, is Elfstones of Shannara by Terry Brooks. This is the TV tie-in edition. Uh, with my love, Amberly, on the front. This was $7.99, which was fantastic. Um, I have seen the first season of the series and really, really loved it. I've heard not so great things about the book, but I'm willing to give it its own chance. Um, and I know that this is actually the second in the original Shannara trilogy and that the first one is called Sword of Shannara, but I just don't think I care about Will's dad, but I do care about Amberly. So, thank you, QBD. Uh, yeah, so those are all the books that I bought on that trip. Thank you for watching my massive book haul. I hope you enjoyed it. And you may have noticed that I've stopped doing book hauls, so this one's going to have to tide you over for a little while. The only reason I did it was because I was going to attach it to my vlog. Uh, so yeah, if you've read any of these, please feel free to leave me a comment and let me know what you thought. Otherwise, I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.